Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum and welcome you all to Communication Theories 1 course. This course has a course code all GMC 311. This is lecture number 25th and today we are going to discuss agenda setting theory. I'm Anwar Khan, lecturer of journalism and mass communication department, cohort unity of science and technology. Let's first of all have a look at the various discussion points that we are going to discuss and elaborate in our today's session. So the first one is that uh, first of all we are going to look at the development of the agenda setting theory how this very theory uh, was developed and uh, by whom it was developed so we are going to look at it then we are going to look at the definition of the agenda setting theory that what do we mean by agenda setting from the perspective of the communication then we are going to look at the exemptions of the agenda setting theory and then finally, we are going to look at uh, certain articles which support the agenda setting theory, right? So these are the discussion points that we are going to elaborate in our today's session. And these are our learning objectives as well. I hope that uh, after attending today's session, our students will be able to answer all these four questions. So let's have a look at the development of the agenda setting theory that how it was developed and by whom it was developed. So basically, it was uh, Bernard Cohen that who identified the very process of the agenda setting theory through the mass media. But when actually the problem is that he didn't coin the very term agenda setting and the credit thus goes to two other researchers or communication scientists who are Maxwell McCombs and Donald Shaw who carried out their research on the 1968 u.s presidential election and thus the credit goes to them maxwell mccombs and donald shaw and when what happened that uh, uh, they studied the uh, voting behavior of the chapel hill city of the north carolina and they came to know that uh, the voting behavior of the uh, people of the chapel hill was very much affected uh, they were uh, influenced by, uh, by the coverage of the mass media and that is the reason that this very study is also called as a Chapel Hill study 1968, right? So we can say that uh, the credit of uh, coining and the, uh, uh, the credit of uh, properly developing this very theory, agenda setting theory, goes to Maxwell McCombs and Donald Shaw. So let's have a look at the very definition of the agenda setting theory that what does it mean? So. The definition says that the process of planting agenda by mass media in the audiences is called agenda setting theory. So the definition is very simple and according to it mass media is responsible for making the narratives of the audience or for shaping the opinions of the audience. Right. So it means that mass media play an active role in making the opinions of the audience. So assumptions of the agenda setting theory, what are the various assumptions of this theory? Let's have a look at it. Uh, this theory, uh, agenda setting theory, it has two assumptions. The very first one is that the press and the media do not reflect reality. They filter and shape it. And the second uh, assumption is that uh, more attention the media gives to an issue, the more likely the public will consider that issue to be the important. So these are the two assumptions of the agenda setting theory. So in the coming slides, we are going to discuss both of them that what do we mean by it? So first assumption of the agenda setting theory, which says that uh, the press and the media do not reflect reality. They filter and shape it. Well, uh, this has been highlighted by the agenda setting theory when the uh, Maxwell McCombs and Donald Shaw, they carried out their research on the voting behaviors of the Chapel Hill city. And they came to know about it that media had affected uh, their voting behavior. And the same thing has been highlighted, highlighted by McWill, one of the famous communication scholars, that he says that uh, the media select, process, and shape content. Right? Look at the wordings of uh, his quotation. That media select, process, and shape content. Uh, it means that uh, the content has, uh, is selected by the media. And after selecting it, they process it and they shape the content for their according to their own purpose right and uh, this very content it has a very long consequences it has long effects on the behavior of the people uh, for the uh, narrative building of the people right so the same thing which has been said by the agenda setting theory the same thing has been said by the mail 
look at the second example which support the first assumption of the agenda setting theory and this very uh, paragraph has been taken from the book gatekeeping theory which has been written by Pamela Shoemaker and Tim Voss and these lines are very powerful and meaningful look at the wordings and sentences it says that process of the uh, discarding and uh, crafting countless bits of information well it means that uh, the news offices they have lots of information uh, it may be hundreds of information on daily basis so what happened that uh, many of them they are uh, they are discarded and um, some of them uh, some of the information they are selected so the very first process uh, is very important that they discard some of the information and then they select some of the information right so this is very important because what are the yardsticks with them that they select uh, some of the information and discard most of the information right because what happened that the information which has been discarded by them may be very important and valuable for other uh, media organizations right so that is very difficult to decide which information is valuable for one organization and the same information will not be valuable for another uh, organizations and look at uh, the end lines this process determines not only which information is selected but also <clears throat> what the content and nature of the message will be so this is very uh, important that after selection of the in, uh, uh, information what happened that uh, that very information or content is shaped and edited by the media organizations so uh, the nature of that very message or content is very important because uh, it has a specific agenda in it and that very agenda makes the narratives of the audience makes the opinion of the audience right so this very second example uh, is uh, the best example and which supports the first assumption of the agenda setting theory so look at the second assumption of the agenda setting theory and according to this very assumption the more attention the media gives to an issue the more likely the public will consider that issue to be important and uh, it is quite true because when we uh, look at uh, any of the media and uh, where we find that an issue is repeatedly uh, shown on that very television uh, we think that that is the most important issue although many more important issues will be there but media is not showing those issues but the issue which is important for them and which strengthens their objectives and purposes they have picked up that very issue and they are presenting that issue to the public and in the very first one in the very first assumption of the agenda setting we came to know that actually the mediated reality is different than the social reality and media uh, actually filters the reality it shapes the reality it does not show the exact social reality to the public right so this is the very second assumption of the agenda so McCombs has developed and expanded the agenda setting theory to a great level and the example of this is the second level agenda setting theory because the conventional agenda setting theory it has focused at object level what do we mean by, by object level by object level it means that what to think about because uh, media uh, it picks up an issue out of hundreds of issue and it presents to us that very issue and then we are forced to uh, watch or read that very issue and we think that that is the main issue of the day right and then what happened that the second level agenda sitting theory uh, what happened that it forces us how to think about it right now it is not only the issue that they are presenting to us at the same level uh, it is forcing us how to think about those very issues right so this is a very a uh, tricky uh, art which has been played by the media that they are not only the uh, showing the issue to us but at the same time they are forcing us at the angle to think about that very issue the angle which has been uh, which has uh, with the media has interest in it and that very angle has been presented to us to think about that very media so i can give you the example of the agenda setting theory in this way that uh, if you read out this very article uh, written by Catherine Lawless she has worked on the James Bond uh, film series and you will come to know that how negatively Russian uh, Russians are presented in the James Bond series so you will come to know their culture their dresses their language everything has been very poorly uh, and negatively presented in this very uh, article so agenda setting theory it is an example of the powerful media effects paradigm and this is a situation where to think about the whole of the scenario 
because when we say that uh, a gender setting theory according to this very theory uh, the mediated reality and the social reality they are different from each other and then at the, at the same time we come to know that uh, uh, media has been so far which we have discussed is that media has powerful effects on the people because uh, in the media effects paradigm so we came to know that it was thought that media has limited effects but then it was rejected by the rediscovering powerful effects paradigm and even the negotiated media effects paradigm it also uh, concluded that media has powerful effects because when the media is the only source of information for you so at that time what happened that uh, you are going uh, to be uh, influenced by the media messages right so that is uh, a situation where we should think about the media that how it is uh, planting and uh, uh, I mean giving us different agendas how they are making our narratives right because uh, we came to know that media is powerful and all around us if we look at uh, the situation so far we are using the media either it is the print media or the electronic media or the online media we are busy with the media one way or the other way if we are not using the print media okay that's okay but we are using the uh, electronic media we are using the movie the documentaries or we are using social media so we have to think about it we have to be very very vigilant because this way uh, we are surrounded by communication devices and this very way media are planting and making our narrative right and we don't even know that we are deceived and we are played with by the media right so uh, being the students of communication and the journalism our students have to uh, keep these uh, situations and uh, assumptions in mind when they are using the media for resources i'm going to suggest you these two books uh, mass communication theory foundations ferment and the future i have recommended this very book on numerous occasions uh, for the communication studies uh, because uh, it has lots of information about the theories about the history about the very beginning of uh, the uh, of these very theories so it is a very informative book uh, you can download it please download it because uh, you will need it one way or the other way maybe uh, at your higher studies you will need it and the very second book communication theories origins methods and uses in the mass media another very informative book uh, it will be available on the uh, google books go there search it out and download it if you get it so thank you very much this is the end of today's presentation let me summarize again what we have discussed in our today's presentation first of all we came to know about the very definition of the agenda setting theory then we came to know about the development of the agenda setting theory then we came to know about the very assumptions of the agenda setting theory and then we provided some of the examples uh, which support the agenda setting theory so this is the end of today's lecture uh, see you in the next lecture till that allah hafiz